This is where your son lives? Yes, right okay. here. What brings you back? What brings you back here? You. Tell me, because you, you look sad. What's... I've been thinking about my mom. And your mom's deceased? She is. Okay. She died in 98. Coming back here is bringing back memories of certain things? It's... Well, yes, of course. It's bringing back when she came to me. You had an experience here. I did. Standing here, what's going through your mind? Well, we had just a very tumultuous life, my mother and I, because my mother lost custody of me when I was five and was ripped away from me, and I never really saw her again till much later in my life. But what does that have to do with when you when come to this house? Well, because she came to me here at this house. And I feel like a lot may happen once we walk through those doors. I feel that walking through that door is going to tell me the real story about a lot of things. Are you ready? Can you old man? Absolutely. This is the moment of truth, you know. OK. This is it. Do you want to see where she came and visited me? I absolutely do. So this is the room that I stayed in when I came for my uh, my 50th birthday. And oh, is that what it was? It was a 50th celebration? Yeah, I'm going to sit down. And um, I had, when I was telling you earlier, my son, he's making the bouillabaisse, and he said he needed more fish stock. I had gone to the store, and as I was coming back, I just started feeling the hair on the sides of my neck really grow up. I was starting to have, like, weird premonitions. I was going hot and cold. From then on, I just felt uncomfortable. And I just said goodnight, finally. And uh, I came in here. I was just sort of tossing and turning, but I did finally go to sleep. And I woke up. And there she was, just sitting on, like, the edge of this bed, asking me, honey, why? She was mad, you know? Well, t wait, what do you mean? Well, like, did you see her or did you feel her? I saw her. She wore gardenia. You smelled her? I smelled her. I saw her, her wig, everything. Also, I saw the hand that she had, she had rolled her Jeep and had lost three fingers on her right hand. It was this finger. You know what she just said to me? She says, besides that, I'm deaf. Oh, my God. You are, like, insane. Oh, my God. She said she always had a turn, though, to hear people. She had one deaf ear. Like, that's insane, because no one, no one, no one knows, except for me and my brother. Wow. Well, she's here. I can assure you. Does she look like she did when she had the cancer? No. She's beautiful now, but like with natural hair, natural teeth, natural everything. How did you know about teeth? She just said, my teeth are even natural now. Did she have dentures? Because she said she her totally teeth. totally did, yeah. Her teeth came out. Now I know you're the real thing. She says, my teeth, you they would. so. She says, they would find my teeth just anywhere. I, I always found her teeth for her when she was, she, she was a speed freak. So that's what happens to your teeth. Uh, so I was the finder of the teeth, and that was hard for my brother and I. But that night, you saw your mother where? Well, I saw her kind of sit down. I can't say she was full in body, but like ghostly. OK, and, and what, what did, did she tell me? What well, did she, she said, she said, why, honey? Why? And I just said, I don't know. You know, I don't know, Mom. Like, because I thought we had resolved everything when she passed. What happened is I supported her most of my life from the time I was 14 until three months before she died. And she kept getting these, like, DUIs, and I just thought I was enabling her. And I really lost a lot of respect for her. And I know what addiction is today, having gone through it myself. And, um... Well, then she called me and she said, I have three months to live. Did you think she was lying? No. I knew she was serious. She said, Tatum, 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 please come out. I knew she was dying, you know? And I wasn't getting there quick enough. And every time she would get sicker, you know, I couldn't 
stay there because I was with three kids in New York. It was right. really difficult all the time. So difficult. I understand. I understand. Your mother understands. You know, I was fine for, for her death, but when she passed, that's when I really went crazy and on the drugs. Like, I, um... You lost it. Yeah, and that's really sad for my kids. How long did that go on? Five years. But when she said to you, why? I don't know what she meant exactly. OK. And that's why I wanted to talk to you. OK. So it was her that you saw. You weren't crazy. But what she said was there was a reason why she showed herself to you that night. Your mother came here to protect you. I don't know what kind of state of mind you were in. I'm not saying you were drinking, but there had to be some decent amount of drinking here that night. Oh, yeah. Because that one. I wasn't drinking. I, right. But you might have been in a different type of vulnerable way. I have to stand up if you don't mind. She said that you always have this tendency to think everything has to do with something you did wrong. She said, you always do that. And when she was saying why, she meant why are you going through all of this, almost like self-torture, all the struggle. Like, you, you, you're you beyond hard on yourself. You beat yourself up. She says, why are you doing this to yourself? It's like you beat yourself up about not just your mother, about so many things. You know, I'm always thinking about my mom, and I'm always thinking how I wish to have a relationship with my daughter that I see other mothers and daughters have, you know, that I want. Of course. You know, this close bond, you know. This is her plea, plea to you. Please do not continue the cycle. God gave you a daughter. Don't wait till you're on the other side to get to know her. Oh, my God. Please, Tatum, please. That's what she's begging you for. Does that, that struck a nerve? I haven't seen my daughter for eight, nine months now. I'm getting claustrophobic in here. Let's go outside. Can I ask you a question? Uh-huh. Have you ever thought about writing a letter to your mom? No. About everything you feel about her, the good, the bad, and the ugly? I encourage you to write a letter, and when you're done with the letter, I want you to burn it, and then I want you to just release it and dedicate it to her. Right. Right. When you're taking these deep breaths, what are you thinking? how hard this is for me. What's, what's the so hard much, part? Just how much loss that I, that I, that I, I can't even talk. So much loss that I have, how much I dismissed her while she was alive and how much I need her now. She and I that. see, you know, mothers and daughters and I think, gosh, you know, and I wish for that to be my daughter and my relationship. She said it will be. She said it will be. She said you've been carrying around this burden so long. She says, just know this was never my intention to hurt you, ever, ever. <laughs>